Hey friends and family, Min Lu Yitu here, and I hope you guys have an amazing day because uh, we are too, man. We are here in the California National Forest with my brother and sister in the background right there. They're getting ready to train, all right? So today is Bravo Company training. Uh, we're gonna train recruits uh, level one and level two. The recruits are getting ready to do a two mile run. I mean, I remember my first two mile, it, it was in the New Guy Hill, and man, it was it was so tough. It was so tough, guys, because uh, I think I was pretty much the last person that finished, and I needed help. Right? <laughs> Luckily, man, these man, these guys are awesome because they're here to help me. And you got to train to get up to that level, but where I'm, I'm at right now, I just got transferred today. I got transferred to security details. So I've been doing security as my main job for so long that I, I feel just just natural for me to be in security. And I wish I was out there with them. But you know, we all have a task to do. And it doesn't really matter uh, what task that is. And as long as we are committing ourselves to the mission, that is what counts. Uh, you know, we have a lot of support we have infantry and remember in the military it takes a lot of support just for one soldier okay so we have recruit training right here they're doing a two miles run right here and uh, they have uh, they're going at it I'd be pulling up the rear. So we just have a um, two miles recruit training. Heading back to uh, the finish line right now. You see this guy running. He's made it. He made it. Yeah, keep going. You're good. You're good. High five, high five, right here. Right high five. Yeah, yeah. 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 Hey, high five, you made it. Congrats. Yeah. High five, high five. High five, guys. High five. Hey, welcome back, man. Welcome back. Welcome back. Any idea how many more are back there? Uh, two, three. Hey, welcome okay. back, brother. Welcome Thank back, you. man. Yeah. High five! Yeah! Hey, welcome back! Thank you very much! Hey! Come on! Come on! Welcome back guys! Welcome back man! Hey, High five! Alright! What's yeah. up? Lou! <laughs> <laughs> welcome back brother! Welcome back man! Thank you! Welcome back! Welcome back guys! Welcome back! Well these are the last here other than the, uh, the, back, gun, the, the back. truck. Nice. He's gonna turn around and head back this way so... Good to go! So recruits just finished up with their training and I think most of the people made it, I think. Wait a minute, are the other guys coming down this way too? Yeah. The three milers? Right there's the lead I think. Full gear, three miles full gear. Man. Welcome back, welcome back. Three miles full gear. Hey, welcome back, man. Welcome back. Get it your own? Alright. Welcome back. Oh. Hey, you made it, man. Welcome back, brother. Welcome back, man. Yeah. Look at this guy. You too. You good? You too? Good. Alright, cool. Hey, welcome back, brother. Look at this, man. We just made it three miles right here. <laughs> welcome back, brother, man. Come back. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Made it. Made it. <laughs> so I count. And you got to, is this the last group? Last group? Yeah. Yep. Well, welcome back, sister. Sister, welcome back. Yes. Right here. Welcome back. Yeah. Hey, I'm going to cool. take a shit in about an hour. Are you okay. ready? We're ready. As long as you can dig a hole. Okay. All right.
So right here we're doing a checkpoint security. Uh, one part of our team is doing personnel security. A security team, like I said, is going to be made up of your overwatch, your secondary overwatch, and your two searchers. One of your two search people, they're going to be posted at the gate. Right? Right. Okay. So I'm going to let you take over from here and I'll fill in with you. Uh, so, okay, wait, so you want me to just run it through? Mm -hmm. So, person at the gate. Take me through from when a vehicle gets here to when you start the search and everything. So, a vehicle will come up, you'll stop your vehicle. One, for people coming in to a secured access point for our group, so it'll be a password, your challenge word, pro word. You'll run through the process of communicating that with them. Um, at that point, from that point in, depending on which way you go, whether they're friendly or not friendly, um, you then bring them into your search area. Uh, the one person controlling driver and communicating would remove the person from a vehicle. That's right. If the vehicle, when we're going to do the search, the person you remove, the driver from the vehicle, you want them to open the doors, hatches around the vehicle prior to search. You do not yourself want to be opening any of your main compartments, doors, trunks, hoods. You let them pull all the releases, latches, open it prior to removing them from the vehicle. Uh, your secondary overwatch that will be with you will be positioning with you at all times in movement to you and the driver and even an additional passenger as well. So everything I do, same thing with the main overwatch, will be coordinated so I can control the person and leave access for the overwatch at all times. Mm -hmm. So and he's got a clear line of sight. And you move with him around. Correct. Um, so once you get into the vehicle search area, you've had him uh, around and open all of the compartments, the main compartments. You remove the driver and or the passenger away. We'd want to take them away. So we've done that with a third person. Yep. One, two, a third person would then take them and control them at another point out of line of sight of the vehicle. So they cannot see what you're doing or tips or hypothetically IED or explosive, they no longer have control of a detonation and visual contact. Um, so you'd want to take them far enough away out of an area, preset a point off to the side, maybe around the corner. We'll set something up to do that when we run through it. Um, at that point, your overwatch, we ran the overwatch to stay with the control mm -hmm. because now we have our main overwatch covering a two-person team, which would be the communicator, and a secondary person would then go through the vehicle. Um, creativity is a big thing when going through the vehicle. You really got to be creative because people that use vehicles and those type of things are very creative where you put it. Fuse boxes can hold quite a bit, um, explosive-wise, a pipe bomb, and especially in a vehicle, it now becomes a bigger versus a pipe bomb or something out in the open or any other instrument used. When we bring that person out, prior to taking them away, we would run them through a controlled pat down, you know, searching them for any weapons, uh, anything on their person that would be questionable to keep uh, prior to taking them off to the side. You would do that uh, prior to taking them off. Including their hats. Yeah. Everything. Hats, bands, yeah. You want to run them through a real quick uh, demonstration? All right, real I need quick, one. Uh, question. Uh, yeah. I got a little thing. Do we uh, get their uh, IDs and stuff? Your IDs should be presented right when you come to that gate. Okay. Uh, everyone in the vehicle? Yeah. Yes. If they are a civilian or somebody of non-military nature or non-militia nature and they do not have an ID, that's automatically grounds for them to come in and have their vehicle stripped, period. Okay? They have no ID on them. You can't verify who they are or any of that. But, yeah, uh, when I was taught this, it was always two gates, okay? first gate that's where they get their IDs checked okay and that's where you got your guy at that gate that gives you a hand signal or even a radio signal that tells you hey these guys are such and such and he'll he'll give you tip you in 
on whether or not they are considered by him to be hostile, friendly, or other. All right? So let's uh, see. One, two, three. They need four people total. Um, preferably people that have done this before. Well, me and Jason have done it. Uh, Liam's here. We'll keep Liam. And then I need one person on the hill. And we'll run through the first course and the instructional part, and then we'll break you off into groups. Let each group uh, cover that. I can be on the hill. You want to? Okay. The person on the hill is a security overwatch in general. Covers the whole scene of what's going on. They will have to do a small amount of moving, very limited, because what we're going to do is control the movement to live, allow them access. So, go ahead and back her up. Uh, three people with me, the two will stay back, you'll cover the rifle of the watch. Yes, sir. Yep. Even uh, if you don't have the, the second gate, then you still stop them about yep. 20 yards below the gate. Yep. You'll cover my screen. And then uh, so just I'll, bring, I'll bring, I'll bring them, you'll be in the control access, access. I'll bring them in to you. Yeah. Uh, when we come to that point. So, right now we're running them through from the actual control gate all the way through. asking them a bunch of general stuff. What are you doing here? Why are you here? Who are you here to see? What is your plan of business here? That, that'll get people talking. That gives you an indication of whether or not they're nervous. You know, um, you'll be able to see it. They'll start to stutter. They'll start looking off into nowhere, start fidgeting with shit. Okay? When they're up here, you try to tell them to keep their hands on the same way as if you got pulled over by a police officer. Keep your hands on the wheel or in sight. Okay? Then once you start giving them the command to step out, you have them open up all their windows, all their doors and everything, all their, their, their hood. Well, this guy initially stays back in case anything does blow up or anything like that. He will be minimally injured compared to the driver. Okay, so we're going to bring him into the search area. So you're in the search area, then we control and stop him. Pointing in at him, but just because I don't want to muzzle him. Now, some of the questions I asked him, what he was doing here, I asked him if he was armed. I know he is armed, so I had his arm clean. I didn't ask for his weapon at that point in time. I know he's armed. I kept him individual and controlled his hands movement. I know he's armed now. He's told me if it was concealed, he told me, but I then. Keeping him. Would remove his firearm from him, what I'm not going to do. Um, the actual, I don't do well. Well, actual, this, this here, you to go, you want to once you get it? to this point, mm. you want me to switch it? I'll, I'll, I'll switch to this point. Once you get to this business. point here, the guy who stopped the vehicle is generally going to be the guy searching the vehicle. You're going to hand this guy off to your secondary, okay? This is where he said you need a third person. You have the initial you know, vehicle search person, you have your overwatch, and you have your third, third person that you're going to take this guy off, off out into the middle of nowhere. But before you do that, I have him open everything up. Have him open everything up in his truck. We're going to switch. We're switching. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, I'll, I'll, I'll,
like I said before, out of visual sight of the vehicle. So they cannot control anything from that point. Okay, and then you'd have a two-man team. Do I have another volunteer? Anybody? Jason? That's fine. And then what we'll go is we'll go through the vehicle. You want to look for anything that looks kind of out of place or it's not ordinary, you know, especially like if you look around, if there's any kind of wires hanging down, you want to look underneath the seats. A couple really good things to have is to have a flashlight. And it's always a good idea to carry a little pocket mirror with you, like a little extension mirror. Mm -hmm. It's really good because you can shine it underneath the seat. You can take a look. You can look up underneath the dash. Like you can carry just a real little, like simple thing like this. Extends out. Mm -hmm. You can use your flashlight. You can get some light up underneath the seat. You can get it up underneath the dash. You can go around. You can kind of use it to kind of probe around a little bit where you don't want to touch. Same thing when you go into the engine compartment. You want to look at anything that looks like abnormal. It's like, hey, there's some wires over here that look really clean, or they look a little bit out of place, or there's something that doesn't quite look right. Same thing, little cracks and crevices, you can look around. Same thing as you're going around the vehicle, you're looking underneath the vehicle, making sure that you don't see anything, and you just kind of systematically work your way around the vehicle. <coughs> and another thing to look for, I always like to take the doors, give the doors a shake, okay? If there's anything in there that's not secured, you'll be able to hear it. Also, around the door trim edging here, look for pry marks. Look for pry marks in the plastic any place. That tells you somebody stuck something in there to pop it open to get something in. One of the things they forgot is this gas cap. Make sure there's nothing going down into there. You'll be able to check the, the, the gaps here in the plastic liner so you can see any wiring or anything stuck in there. Okay? And what he's saying with the mirror, as you go around, you're looking at anything attached to possibly the fuel tank <coughs> mounted underneath the vehicle that doesn't look like it's going to be there or anything like that. It's and got a bed liner. Really thorough search too. You get underneath the vehicle yeah. and you look around. And you check the tailgate as well. Yep. Yeah, everything. Yeah, any place. The headliners, anything. Like you know, something like this. You'd come up and you go, you know, that looks a little suspicious. It's kind of missing something here. There's a hole there. You know what's you know what's in there. You might want to investigate it. And if you come across something that you're not sure about. Then you'd remove the vehicle to a safe area that's far enough away that if, you know, something happened or if it was um, rigged up that, you know, wouldn't cause any damage and have some other people go through it later a little bit more in depth. A couple of the other things I just want to interject on the searches too. When you search people normally, you're going to have different kinds of people and they're going to be a different threat level. Right. And so the thing is, even if they don't seem like they're much of a threat level and you sit down and you talk to them and they give you the right words and it sounds really good, but there's just something not right. I would take them all out, search them all down, and prone them all out. You lay them all out there, their hands are out, they can't touch anything, they can't reach anything, and then you search their vehicle. If you feel kind of odd about it, even if these people are people in the militia, or they're people in uniform, they're people that have ID, even if they're people that know the password, you go through this process, if you talk to them and explain to them that, hey, this is, we're doing this, we're doing this for your own protection and for our protection, most people understand. Most people that you search will understand, hey, it's okay, because I really want you to search the car behind me when they come in, if this is a place that I'm going that's safe. So anytime you get that little hair on the back of your neck, something doesn't quite feel right, always err on the hostile side. Prone them out, strip them down, make sure a lot of times people's, like uh, Lieutenant Dale was saying, a lot of times people's their movements, the way they talk. Sometimes it's things that are not really obvious, but you kind of just pick something up in your speech. You pick up some kind of weird attitude about this person. Those are the people that, you know, and sometimes you don't, you know, so. Yeah. But uh, you want to be really, really kind of careful with that. Yeah, like what he's saying, little, little things you'll pick up on. Like today, for example, it's 80 degrees almost. Yeah, you see somebody driving up, he's got a jacket on. Why does he have a jacket on, okay? If he will not answer your question directly or tends to go, uh, 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 that's, that's a red flag right there. And if they're fidgeting all over the place, you know, wanting to look around the car or if their eyes keep darting to a particular location every time, that'll tell you, you know, that there's something wrong. Okay. Um, particularly if, like what he said, if there's more than one vehicle that's coming in, if he keeps looking into that rear view mirror, that tells you, that'll tell you another thing that that car behind him is carrying something that he isn't. Okay. Any questions on the vehicle search portion? Do they have a dog as a vehicle? 
have them take the dog out. But they have to be in control of all their stuff. Like you saw when you, know, you had John go through the truck. It's like, okay, there's something in there and I don't really know what it is. So when you walk the person around the driver, because normally basically you take the driver out, the driver is going to be your person to contact. The passengers, you're basically going to search them and you're going to go put them somewhere. Okay? You're going to use the driver, you're going to have him walk around and it's like, you know what, I don't really want to touch that box. I don't want to move that box. So I'm going to have the driver move the box. Pull the box out and put it over here. Dump the contents out on the ground. I want to see them. I don't want to touch it because it could be booby trapped. Okay? Say so, we do find something. What's the procedure then? Then the just, is. yeah, if you suspect that there's a bomb on the vehicle. Like a bomb, yeah. Right, exactly. Then basically everybody moves back. Everybody moves back, and we get some bomb disposal guys to come and check it out. Uh, I, ideally, what we would be working with is in that situation, we would be working with some other enforcement, either real military, other law enforcement as well. We'd be an additional force uh, adding to their, their support, so whatever we would do. So in that situation, most likely we'd have other support that we could put the vehicle off into that off to that. Um, so if we're really called into an active scenario, we would have that support as well. So they would then handle that. Some, something we'd really get right. into. And if we didn't, we would just move far enough away to get out of the blast radius right. in case it was. Say we get them out of the car and somebody takes off running. What's the procedure then? Shoot them. <laughs> Shoot them? Yeah. Shoot them. Immediately. To kill or wound? Uh, there is Stop no them. wounding. Yeah. Right. Stop them. Kill them. Period. And then move away from the vehicle. Exactly. If they are not complying with your orders, okay, then there's something wrong. If they decide they want to take off, you know, if you can catch them, fine. But what if they're catch, you know, carrying something? Okay, if you haven't searched them yet and you know they're not carrying anything, you know, try to run them down or have your Overwatch, you know, somebody up the road try to catch them. But if you haven't searched them yet, they're a threat. You don't want them to get any farther or in, uh, any farther than they already are into a group of people, into a building, drop them. They could be trying to get you away from the vehicle too. Well, they can right. also be trying to. Get themselves away get from the their self away from the vehicle so they get out of their own blast radius. So at that time, you would remove yourself and anyone, automatic personnel would be move yourself in that blast zone as well. Let your overwatch take care of your threat. But everyone would move away from that blast zone because potentially the, the threat's there. This is Marlon right here, my brother right here. Go ahead, Marlon. Do you have anything to say? How's it going? Uh, yeah, YouTube channel, Adrenaline Rush. Uh, brother uh, at CSM, California State Militia. Yeah, go check out his channel, guys, man. He's an awesome guy. So subscribe to him, of course. Like all his videos. Because, you know, you got to like the broader video, man. They're awesome. They're awesome. Very, very technical and very knowledgeable about all his gear. Right? So, man, I seen you one of those gear that you have in your, your hip belt. Yep. Yeah. Hip belt. Yeah, hip belt. And what else? What else gear? Got the chest rig. You got the Cerakoted AR. And, uh, you know, my favorite Glock 20, my 10 millimeter. So, so out of all your gear, can you tell us, like, what is the number one gear that you would recommend to uh, anyone in the CSM? On a day like today, hydration. Hydration. They get the good hydration pack. Yep. Your That's canteens, right. your canteens, uh, they're good, but when you're on the move, it's just hydration right, right quick and easy. That's right. A lot of new guys will go with the canteen, they'll quickly go to hydration pack as their next gear. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Just skip that step and get a hydration pack, guys, exactly. because yeah, it just keeps your hand free and you, know, you have so much gear on and stuff like that. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Uh, hey guys, I want you to do, introduce you on my sister right here, Deanne Mosley. And Sacramento. From Sacramento. And she yes. came all the way over here from them, from there to train with us. And uh, how do you like it so far? Oh, lovely. It's a great location. Yeah. It's a great day, too. I mean, yeah. right here, yeah, the wind. It's not that hot and today. fresh air. Yeah, the fresh air is really nice. And, uh, you know, out of all your, all your equipment, I mean, what else is your number one thing that you would recommend to, like, a, a new recruit that just... You know, just came in. Definitely water. 
And there a camel go. pack is a very good idea because you can wear that on your back. Your hands are free. Uh, go out and get your CCW so you can have your carry your firearm. Um, if there's a CERT program in your neighborhood, you should go into that also. That's working with the fire department, and you will learn a lot of interesting and very useful uh, info for, for the militia. The first aid, of course, is extremely important. The security, which we were just doing back over there, is real good, important to know. Yeah, it's really great, and you seen that our last uh, training was the C LS training. Have you, have you been to that training? I don't believe so. Well, yeah, we're going to have more training like that. And man, just every time we come here, we just learn so many new things, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And, uh, and you do not have to be former military. I happen to be former military. Many of our members are, but that's not important. You are going to learn things, and we're kind of based on what how the Army runs things. The rank goes that way. And wonderful yeah it is wonderful we have the yes. yeah we have the family here you know everyone is committed children to... family if animals come everything yeah you've seen a dog running around guys yeah. okay <laughs> don't eat it no no don't eat it okay <laughs> but right now they're training their recruits to do uh, drills All right, guys, so the train is finished for today, and go ahead home, and I'll see you guys at the next episode. See you later.